Hey, and uh, hello again. I'm Bob Weir with another interview of People in the News in North Texas. My guest today is Flower Mound resident and Texas State Representative Tan Parker, who is in his seventh term. Thank you for being here. I'm not going to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you would begin, please, by telling our viewers uh, about House Bill 822, which is billed as a measure that addresses the causes and symptoms of adverse childhood experiences. No, I, I, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. I'm very proud of the work that uh, we're putting in to create this bill, uh, 822. Uh, they call the term uh, scientifically as ACEs, and it refers to adverse childhood experiences. And it's really a new uh, way of thinking and approaching trauma, childhood trauma. Uh, for years, we didn't understand the, the impact that trauma had on the development of a brain uh, as a child. Now we know the, the severe implications that trauma can occur uh, and cause in a child's brain, and, and therefore the negative impacts, horrible things that can happen as a result of that. And so this bill is really the first of its kind to be able to bring, if you will, all the stakeholders together. So bring together agencies, nonprofits, law enforcement, deliverers of uh, mental health services and so forth to put together a five-year comprehensive study as to how we best help these kids uh, that are suffering. You know, one of the things I like to kind of reference and talk about is the fact that, you know, historically when you see a kid having, having problems over the years, our typical reaction is, what's wrong with that kid? What happened to that child? We need to change that completely, invert it and say, what happened to that child, right? Because at the end of the day, we now know that, that these adverse impacts are making, uh, unfortunately, uh, horrific, horrific um, challenges for these children as they're growing up, and, and they're paying a horrific price, society's paying a horrific price, and there are things that we need to do together that we can tackle this problem. And so uh, this is really the first of its kind to do that, and uh, I'm very excited about the difference that it will make, hopefully, in protecting our children uh, and letting everybody know just the importance of what's taking place and how we can avoid trauma. If we can get ahead of horrific things that happen. If we can get ahead of uh, horrible accidents and shootings and uh, horrible things that occur because of trauma as, as a child, it'll make a huge difference in the lives of Texans. So what is the uh, status of the bill? So I filed the bill uh, just roughly a week ago now, but, and uh, we filed it. We had a press conference on it. The bill now will be referred to committee. And so I'll start the process of uh, advocating for the bill with my colleagues in the legislature. Uh, I'll lay it out, present it, and obviously work to pass it over the course uh, of the next few months that we're in session. All right. Now, I want to talk about another bill you recently filed, which is House Bill 805, assisting chronically ill Texans with access to investigational medicines and treatments not yet approved by FDA. A a absolutely. Uh, this is another bill I'm very passionate about. You know, the reality is last session I passed a bill called Charlie's Law. Uh, that was really allowing uh, Texans to have access to adult stem cell therapies, those that are not allowed today in the United States. Uh, it was the first of its kind in the country. Um, it's now uh, working with some of these national organizations, model legislation for the rest of the country. And this bill I filed now is an extension of that. And it's also an extension of President Trump's right to try that he signed in the law last year. And so the right to try, of course, focuses on the challenges and the needs of people with terminal conditions. And what we're doing with this bill in Texas is specifically working to help the chronically ill. Uh, we know how, obviously, there are hundreds of thousands of Texans that have chronic illness, and we want to be able to provide access to these kinds of life-saving therapies um, in a unique manner that today wouldn't necessarily be available. So it's another part of uh, uh, my work in this area to continue to provide real medical freedom uh, for Texans. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the right to try bill. You already answered that. Uh, and, uh, and this is for uh, people who really don't have any other hope. Uh, and so they are experimental medicines, but it, it is, is this mean it's left up to them yes. to try it when there is no other hope? Why not give them a chance at least and Look, some hope? Hundred per Bob, that's exactly it. I mean, the reality is we're giving people hope when hope doesn't exist today. And the reality is, is that, you know, I believe that an individual citizen should have the right to be able to waive their, you know, their uh, a functioning adult, they'd be able to waive, if you will, uh, taking any kind of legal action or what have you against something that would be a breakthrough medication. And the reality is, is when those things are disclosed properly, uh, I believe that you're allowing an adult to make a, a wise decision for themselves on whether that this particular treatment can make a difference for them in improving dramatically their quality of life or saving their life. 
And so uh, to me, it's one of the most fundamental freedoms that we uh, cherish in this country it is medical liberty and medical freedom. And, uh, and this really uh, sets us up in that direction to continue to challenge, if you will, the status quo of the FDA in Washington appropriately uh, and to continue to be the leading state in the country for medical freedom. Yeah, those are two really, oh, oh I see, very important bills. Uh, thank you for, for filing them. Uh, I want to move on to something that happened recently. While you were in Austin at the swearing-in ceremony for your seventh term, you were summoned to the White House for another ceremony. Now, the reason you were invited was because of your longtime commitment to ending the scourge of human trafficking. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, no, Bob, love to. Thank you for the opportunity. It was a tremendous privilege. Uh, I was literally, uh, the day that we had our swearing-in ceremony in Austin, I was with uh, my family and with my staff, uh, and it's one of those days I took a phone call. It was one of those unknown numbers that I, that I picked up, and uh, it was the White House inviting me to, to be in the Oval Office the next morning at 10 a.m. with President Trump. Uh, what a privilege. And uh, the net of it all is, is that it's, uh, the bill the President was signing into law uh, dealt with stopping trafficking, and a uh, very important topic. Uh, that we crack down and stop human trafficking in this country. And I've been blessed to be a leader on that issue now for the better part of a decade in Texas. And uh, because of that work, uh, I was uh, uh, selected to be uh, uh, in the room and be a part of that uh, ex really extraordinary experience. A lot of the elements that are now passing at the federal level, we've been passing and leading on in Texas now for a number of years. So I'm very proud of the work in that area. It's a critical area. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to protect these precious babies that are being thrown into this form of modern slavery. We've got to crack down on it and make a real difference. And uh, so I'm honored to be a part of that. It was a, one of those memories I'll never forget uh, to be with the president in the Oval Office and that. Yeah. Uh, members of the cabinet and yeah. uh, members of Congress. Uh, it was really just a really special, special experience for me in life to be there. Yeah. Um, and I was following that pretty closely, you know, <laughs> with, with, uh, with your dad and, and, and uh, we were talking about it. And, and uh, I'm just looking for every photo I can see with you over there with the, with the president also. Uh, congratulations. That's quite an honor to be called like that. No, it really was. And Thank that's you. a result of all the work you did in that area. Uh, I want to ask you It's been a privilege this. to lead on those issues over the years, Bob. It's been a real tremendous privilege to, you know, look, I, if I could for a moment, sure. you know, the reality is, is that everybody I think knows, you know, as a, as a conservative Republican, I'm focused on a free enterprise. Uh, improving our business environment, lowering taxes, property taxes in particular, obviously for the citizens of Texas and so forth. But it's so important that we focus on the moral fiber of our society, that we, that we tackle these issues, be it stopping human trafficking, be it working to address these issues, these adverse uh, childhood experiences where we know the science now shows us that we can track and find out what's happening with these kids before horrible things are happening and allocate our resources more intelligently to be able to help these folks in need. And, and at the same time, be able to address these issues around medical freedom. Um, I just think it's important that we as Republicans focus on these kinds of issues because I really think uh, they're ultimately what matters most to the people of Texas. And, and I, just, I have to ask you this because a lot of people have heard this. Uh, um, was, was there anything to the rumor that Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick uh, would be offered the job of Department of Homeland Security? Boy, I, you know, that, that rumor was obviously all over the Capitol, Bob. You're yeah. exactly right. Uh, obviously, Governor Patrick uh, does a wonderful job for Texas and uh, was actually at the White House, is my understanding, the day before I was. Uh -huh. uh, he was there actually helping the president with his address before the nation uh, from the Oval Office the evening before I was there. Uh, but look, uh, obviously the governor does a great job for Texas, and uh, yeah, he'd make a great homeland security. Hey, he'd be great in, in any number of roles that he wanted to uh, to be a part of. But but the reality is, is that I think he's continued to uh, be a, a wonderful leader for us uh, in the Senate chamber. Yeah. And, and we take the lose Texas. him in Texas. Actually. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we're, I'm getting the high side, but before I conclude, I just want to mention that your office is at 800 Parker Square in Flower Mound. It Mountain. is. It it's is at Suite 245, and you continue to host constituents on the first Saturday of each month from 8 a.m. until all participants have had an opportunity to enjoy a cup of course, coffee and a pastry while visiting with you to discuss issues. That's great. Absolutely. I, I want to thank you, Representative Parker, for a great job of representing us in the Texas House. It's always a pleasure to talk no, it's to not you. Uh, thank you for your time and for all you do for our community and putting these wonderful opportunities to communicate directly with people together. We appreciate you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching.